In the 20th century, clouds were seeded by numerous countries around the globe with various chemicals to produce rain. China was just doing this over the summer in Beijing to make sure that there weren't any uh, rain, that there wasn't any rain during the Olympics. But all this has changed dramatically with the U.S. military secretive research and plans to control the planet's natural weather. This has not been given very much uh, press, and we have to remember that we are, have a corporate-owned press where 85 percent of radio, television, and print media is owned by five corporations. So they're not going to talk about things that are uh, of really serious consequence, and that's somewhat of the blessing, a mixed blessing of the Internet, but there's certainly plenty of information on weather modification. The Air Force is on record as saying, quote, they want to control the weather by 2025, and we are not talking about just seeding the clouds for rain. Weather modification means, quote, any activity performed with the intention of producing artificial changes in the composition, behavior, or dynamics of the atmosphere, unquote. And as of April this year, there are more than 150 different weather modification programs around the world. Since about 2000, the Department of Defense and the Department of Energy have been spraying the entire United States sky with a toxic brew of chemicals and other biologic agents. Can we have that? Can we do that? Just want to show you something. We have two different kinds of trails in the sky right now. One are called contrails. How many of you know what contrails are? Contrails are what have been around uh, from uh, the um, ends of planes since World War II. These are very, very short exhaust trails that usually evaporate within a few minutes. You just look up at the sky and you'll just see a jet sometimes with four trails, but it evaporates pretty quickly. How many of you know what chemtrails are? Nobody. The military and some commercial planes are spraying us with what are called chemtrails. I want you to look at the, and oftentimes before there's a weather front, uh, there are heavy assaults uh, from these planes just before a weather front has changed and comes in. Military and some commercial jets have been fitted with huge barrels of at least 49 different kinds of documented chemical poisons. Among other documented ingredients in this toxic man-made clouds are, patho are pathogenic molds, fungi, weaponized viruses and made in some places like uh, of the secret site at Fort Detrick, Maryland, which is supposed to be a cancer site, but there are a number of scholars and professors tracking this that have big questions about this. Barium and nanoalumin particles. What do these do to the human body? Barium is an alkaline earth mineral. It was discovered in 1774. At low doses, it can act as a muscle stimulant. At high doses, it detrimentally affects the heart and the nervous system. Barium is toxic to all mammals, and that means not just humans. Aluminum, which is the most abundant metal in the earth's crust, is known to diminish kidney function, and destroy brain cells and cognitive function. Just think about it. Just between the aluminum and the mercury that we're breathing all the time, we've got already a serious issue about uh, brain function and cognitive function. There is also documented evidence that the aluminum in chemtrails is released as nanoparticles and that when they reach the Earth environment for wildlife the, in lakes and streams, it's causing serious uh, problems with wildlife there. Researchers are also finding that nanoparticles interfere with the growth of plants. Nanotechnology is totally unre unregulated. Just this past uh, month, a uh, new research 
report uh, came out uh, showing and documenting for the first time that these nanoparticles actually go through the skin. Well, if you breathe them, whether they go through the skin or whether you're inhaling them, it's still a problem, a serious problem. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.